okay, I got a request from a viewer to talk about inflation and share some of my thinking about it. And uh, it, this is a really big topic. We'll probably do, I might do more than one video about it, but I did want to share certain ways that you can protect yourself from, invest, from, in, uh, from inflation through investing in the stock market. And then the obvious other solution would be something like a, a scarce digital asset like Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is obviously kind of the most talked about solution, quote unquote solution for uh, inflation. But there's certain problems with Bitcoin, uh, namely, you know, we've just seen massive price changes just in the past month. And it's kind of hard to justify something to hedge away inflation when the price goes from 60,000 something to 30,000 in a matter of weeks, right? Um, so if you want to use that as your vehicle to protect you from inflation, you have to be okay with the asset being sort of fundamentally unproductive, meaning it doesn't produce dividend or other income for you. And you have to stomach price fluctuations like we just saw and just and be cool with that, right? And that is, that's somewhat of a lot to ask. And so Bitcoin might be a solution for aspects of inflation, maybe if you think very, very long term, but it might not be the only solution for inflation. There might be other ways to, to kind of tackle this problem. So I wanted to talk about some ways you could use the stock market to, to grapple with inflation or to protect yourself from it. And really, I kind of think about three different categories of stocks to think about. Uh, one is companies that have very, very good pricing power. So the type of company that can pass through any price increase in their input costs, they can just pass them through to the consumer and the consumer will just buy and, and pay that price increase. So traditionally, we would think of, say, tobacco companies that would be a poster child for this type of company. Uh, maybe it's tough to make that argument now because smoking rates are declining, but it is sort of the traditionally has been the poster child for pricing power. Uh, a lot of beverage companies, for example, it's a low ticket item. It doesn't really matter to the consumer if it's a good brand. The consumer will pay for price increases. This is another potential idea to potential category. Um, an another example might be very ultra high uh, ticket items. So say like companies like Tiffany or you know, maybe high-end watchmakers, you know, where the buyer is so wealthy that it doesn't matter if the price is 10% more, 50% more, or 100% more, the, the, the buyer is still going to make the buying decision and the price doesn't matter so much. So that genre of kind of consumer, consumer companies would be sort of a, a type of protection from inflation as well. So the pricing power genre of companies. Second example would be companies that produce scarcity in their own shares. So you know, we talked about digital scarcity, something like Bitcoin. There's actually a genre of stocks in the stock market that consistently buy back shares and are consistently reducing the number of shares outstanding. That is another way to think about a type of scarcity. And we did a video on this many, many videos ago called, I called it the shortage of shares theory. Certain great companies, very, very good businesses, very cash generative businesses that are consistently buying back stock, those companies actually can protect you from inflation by producing value through this buyback to shareholders. So you try to identify great, great companies that do consistent buying back of shares. That's another place you can be. Uh, and then the third example would be stocks that actually directly participate in producing inflating products. So, you know, commodity producers. Uh, you know, the, the, the oil, oil industry is actually a place where when there's inflation, the price of oil goes up, right? If you're a manufacturer or a company that extracts oil from the ground and then sells it, you do better, right? If you're a gold miner, uh, a copper miner, or you make steel or aluminum, now granted, it's a little different when you're actually processing the metal because your energy costs are going to go up with inflation, but still, your end product is going to have price increases, and in other words, you'll make more money because of the price increase of your end product. So a lot of times people think of mining companies as sort of a textbook example here, okay? So these are different types of solutions you can use in the stock market that can be productive assets. Many mining companies pay dividends. Obviously consumer products companies with pricing power pay dividends. So these are productive assets from a cash flow standpoint. You can invest in them and it solves multiple problems at once. But at the end of the day, we're not going to know what kind of inflation we're going to face. We may face more or less inflation than we expect. And so I would pick companies from these different categories and also have some exposure to a scarce digital asset like Bitcoin as a way of protecting yourself with a portfolio of different assets. OK, so as always, I hope this helps.